Crypto Comic Con 2024. How are you guys doing? It is great to see y'all. Thanks for having me back. My name is Billy Kills. I'm your host. Thank you. I'd like to introduce our judges. We've got a great panel of judges this year. Up first, we got Kristen Kiltastic. You can find Kristen on Instagram at Kristen underscore Kiltastic. We got Hannah Attack. Instagram, Hannah underscore Attack. And then we got Kendra. Instagram, Curvy is just a shape. Make sure you check out our judges. One more quick round of applause for all three of our judges. We're lucky to have them here. Okay, guys, let's go over how this is going to roll a little bit. Okay, I got a black X in tape up here. It's called a mark. Whenever you guys come up, I want you to hit the mark so that we can see you on the live stream so that the judges can get a good view of your cosplays, okay? L we're going to come up. Th I think we're going to avoid that side. We're going to come up this side and go down this side so that we don't trip over the computer. I know a lot of you guys have big costumes, so we want you to stay safe. When you're coming up the stairs, be careful. When you're going down the stairs, be careful. No running up to the stage, please. I almost had somebody eat it real bad last year. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> okay, one more thing. We're going to do the, uh, the youth costumes. And uh, so that we can get to the adults and the groups after that, we're going to take a small break so they can get judged and sent home if they need to go home for school or whatever. It's Saturday. They don't have school. Why are we sending the kids home? Just kidding. We're going to do the kids, take a little break so they get judged, and then we'll come back. So don't go anywhere. We, we're here for a couple hours doing this. So who's ready to see some youth cosplays? Okay, I'm going to ask you guys what your cosplay is when you come up. I'm not going to try to guess what you wrote down. Actually, somebody rewrote these. They look pretty good. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Give it up for our judge, everybody. I can actually read these now. Okay, we got Allie as Draculara from Monster High. Come on up. What a great costume. Strong start. Strong start. Allie, how did you put your costume together? Um, uh, for the skirt, it was, it was like I basically had to cut it out and used fabric, a lot of fabric, and I basically traced it over another sheet of fabric and laid out the lines to make out the look this little so you cut out all these designs here yeah yes for the skirt how did you make your headdress um so it was a big circle and then i added this heart and then wires that are here then there is these little beads that we had so i put it and then we had a school so i put it right there too did you paint the headdress yourself Yes, sprayed paint it. Why don't you turn around so everybody can see your whole costume? Y'all give it up for Allie. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I think this is Damon. Great Escape Freddy. Oh, here comes Damon. I love the FNAF costumes. I wasn't a FNAF fan until I saw the movie. It's pretty good. That costume looks really hard to see in. <laughs>
Dead man walking. We got a prisoner. What a great costume, right, guys? So, Damon, what made you choose Great Escape Freddy? Uh, I was full Halloween one year. <laughs> ah! Full Halloween one year. For Halloween one year? Uh-huh. How'd you make your costume? Uh, using EVA foam and clay. Cosplay classics. So what'd you make the, make the feet out of? Same thing? Yeah, and uh, some slippers. Did you paint the chains yourself, or did, or did they come pre-painted? Uh, I bought them at the store. Okay, that's fine. Uh, how did you paint the mask? That looks really cool. Uh, using, I think, uh, plaster dip, I think. It looks great, Damon. Everybody give it up one more time for Damon. Corbin, Ringmaster Foxy. Another FNAF. These kids in the FNAF costumes go all out, I tell you what. Another good one, guys. Give it up. <laughs> Corbin, what made you choose Ringmaster Foxy? Uh, I thought it was a cool character to choose. It's a really cool look. How'd you put the mask together? Uh, EVA foam and cosplay. Well, just clay. How did you form it? Uh, I used plastic dip. What about the shirt, the pants? Where'd you get those? Uh, I think I went to Goodwill and other stuff. It's a great place for cosplay. Give us a whip crack. Yeah. <laughs> whip a crack. One more time. Corbin, everybody. Thank you very much. Tyler Bakugo. Where's Tyler? Where's, ba where's the Bakugo costume? We have any My Hero Academia fans in the house? Yeah, yeah. Great costume, Tyler. What made you choose Bakugo? Um, just because it was one of my previous Halloween costumes. Oh, it's an easy cosplay. Ha Halloween costume? Throw it on. Let's go. Uh, where'd you get it? Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. Perfect place. It looks like you have some homemade stuff, though. What are those? Uh, they're grenades. How did you make the grenades? With foam. I did not make them. I was gifted them. Who gifted them to you? Right there. Who is that to you? That is now a friend. Give it up for friends in cosplay. <laughs> do, do you have a catchphrase? What? Do you have a catchphrase? Um, not really. Not really. That's a great catchphrase. Everybody give it up for Tyler and Bakugo. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, Augie as Noodle. The power armor started moving. I was like, that is not, that is not Noodle. Augie, where's Augie at? Okay, here we go. Noodle in your way up here. Augie, why did you choose Noodle? Because I am obsessed with gorillas again. Augie is obsessed with gorillas again. How did you make your costume? Uh, well, I had three days to make it because I got back from a trip, so I just went to Cheapskate and grabbed some stuff. And <laughs> three-day three cosplay, everybody. 
What's your mask made of? Uh, so this is the base is cardboard, and then I added um, air dry on top, and then I just added Posca. I'm very impressed for three days. Everybody, give it up for Augie. Alistair, Pikachu assassin. Alistair, where's Alistair? I know Alistair. Alistair's mom, are you competing today? Alistair's mom makes these costumes every year. She does a great job. Give it up for moms in cosplay. You are next, yeah. This one, this is an original. What is this? What did you do? Uh, I am Pikachu, the assassin. I, I hail from the Thunder Tribe. I have been assigned by the Water Tribe to uh, to to limit. I mean, catch Prince Charizard from the from from the from the Fire Kingdom. Everything you see before you, I made m by hand, from painting to sewing to even the the printing. I made all this to for people to en enjoy, I mean, be intimidated by this costume. We can enjoy it and be intimidated at the same time. One second, one second, one second. Don't leave yet. Alistair, Alistair, come back, come back, come back. I have some questions. I have some questions. Come over here. Show him this sword. Show that off a little bit. 3D printed. It has the Pokemon balls on each side. What is what is this what is this symbol symbol here? Um, it's originally from Assassin's Creed. I personally have never played it, but my mom has. It's like Ezio's Pikachu right here. That's pretty cool. Everybody, give it up for Alistair. <laughs> up next must be Oliver. Come on up, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver, what is your costume? I am Prince Charizard, Prince of the Fire Kingdom, son of King Moltres. King Moltres of the Fire Nation. Wow. Who's your arch enemy? My arch enemy. Well, he's trying to get hand me down. Assassin N Pikachu. <laughs> and I have something. You want to hold it? I am Prince Charizard, President of Fire Tribe, and son of uh, King Moltres. I will conquer all and destroy this uh, place. Bow before me. Thank you so much, Oliver. Good stuff. Salem, Darth Vader. Where's Salem at? Here we go. We Imperial marching. On the black, on the black X. Darth Vader, an iconic character. Look what you got him doing. Salem, what made you choose Darth Vader? I had the helmet. What? I had the helmet. You had the helmet, so you're just like, we'll throw it together? Where'd you get the costume? Uh, I bought some clothes and then made the armor out of foam. The, the, the armor is, is handmade? Yeah. It's good stuff. What'd you use for the armor? Uh, foam. Foam. What about this stuff? Uh, I had that. Does it make noise? No. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought it, it makes noise. Everybody give it up for Salem. <laughs> we 
Milo the Ghostbuster. Where's Milo at? Has anybody seen the new Ghostbusters movie? Yeah. I got all caught up uh, on my on my pop culture for Comic-Con. I saw Ghostbusters. I saw the new Godzilla. I've been watching Fallout. Who's seen the new Fallout? Oh, it's good. Y'all got to see that one. But Ghostbusters, classic. One of my favorites. Right over here. This one's in it. Milo, how'd you make your costume? So, I... I put it together by getting by getting my jumpsuit, and then I built my proton pack myself. Show them, show them, show them. What do we got? What do we got? What is it? I can't even tell any of what any of these things are. What did you use? I started with a base of cardboard, and then I built my way up from the top down to the bottom, and I used some leftover foam from. My brother's Darth Vader costume. <laughs> what about your, your eyewear? My eyewear? Um, I already had this. It works. It definitely looks like a proton pack. Everybody give it up for Milo. Oh, you want to tell us about the gun? Yes, it works. And it lights up. <laughs> yeah, I love noisy costumes, man. One more time, Milo, thank you so much. Emma Natividad, Chainsaw Man, Dengu. Oh, here we go. A Chainsaw Man. Who's seen Chainsaw Man? That's a lot of hands. Yeah, that's a good anime. <laughs> we limbo. Emma, how'd you make your costume? So I made it out of foam, and then we spray painted it. And for all the like uh, shiny parts, like the gore and the teeth, we put epoxy over the paint. It gives it a nice shine. If you guys can't see that, how long did the costume take you to make? We spent like a year on it because we had to make it out of foam first, and that took us forever. And then we had to paint it. Nice. How'd you paint the teeth? So with the teeth, we got just like a white paint, and we added a little bit of yellow to it at the like gum line. And then we finished it all off with epoxy uh, just to make it shiny. It's a great effect. Everybody give it up for Emma one more time. All right, I'm going to say a quote from the show. Uh, I'm going to be taking this as seriously as you are so you can trust me big time. Yeah. They know their fandom. Uh, Aaliyah, sun drop. Come see me. She's prancing like she's got drops of sunshine in her shoes. Another FNAF costume. Aaliyah, why why did you choose a FNAF costume? Because it's one of my favorite games. I've played it since I was little. It's, it's a, it has a really big fandom. Why do you think that is? Um, it's just a really creative and fun game. That's awesome. What made you choose Sundrop? Uh, he's my favorite character. I love him so much. <laughs> How did you put your costume together? So uh, my grandma actually made the actual costume for me, and we bought the mask. It looks really good. Thank you for coming up. Everybody give it up for Aaliyah. Jackson, we got another chainsaw man. Jackson, come show me your chainsaw man. Ooh. Good spatial awareness with this one. <laughs> Jackson, what made you choose chainsaw man this year? I just like, I like the anime. <laughs> it's a good anime. How did you make your costume? Uh, for the arms, I did cardboard, spray paint, and use a bike chain as the uh, chain for the... That's, it's really creative for the bike chains. I like that. I just bought the mask off Amazon. You just bought the mask. I was going to ask, what happened to your upper, upper chainsaw? It wouldn't stay like straight up, so I just snipped it. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. 
Did you put the blood on the shirt yourself? Yeah. It looks really good. Everybody give it up for Jackson. Yeah. Up next, we've got Amaret as Cherry Bomb. Thank you so much for rewriting these. It's so much easier. Ch -ch 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 Cherry Bomb. I'm showing my age. Who loves the runaways? Yeah. <laughs> I got you guys too, yeah. <laughs> Emirate. I haven't seen Has Been Hotel, but I've seen commercials. It looks great. Why do you like it? Uh, I, I like the show because of the characters, the designs, the backstories of them. And just like the, I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> it, it looks really cool. I got to check it out. So why'd you choose Cherry Bomb? I chose Cherry Bomb because she has been my favorite character for a while. <laughs> what does Cherry Bomb do? If nobody's familiar with, with the series whatsoever, how would you describe, how would you explain Cherry Bomb to them? She blows up people and buildings. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I don't know about you guys. Give it up for Amaret. Adrian? Emily? Another has-been hotel costume. You guys introduced me to so much awesome stuff. I'm so blessed to be here and do this. Thank you so much, everybody, for having me. Now, has-been hotel, from what I understand, is takes place in hell, yes? Yes. So, I'm a little confused. I, I haven't seen an angel in hell. Can you explain your character to us? Well, in one episode, they do go up to heaven for a meeting with the angels, and I'm Emily. And that's where we meet Emily. Yeah. yeah? How'd you make your costume? Um, I got a poster board, and I sewed on the feathers, and I got some wires so I can put them in two different positions. And then I bought the dress bought the corset, and um, I already had the sandals. It looks great. Does Emily have wing ears? No. Oh, okay. It looks great. Everybody give it up for Adrian. <laughs> Emily. Remington as Superman. Come see me over here, buddy. See the black X? Go to the black X over here for me. You are the most super Superman I've ever seen. Why do you like Superman? Uh, because he can fly. That's your favorite part? He can fly? Do you know what other powers Superman has? Uh, the laser beam and the freeze breath. Those are my favorite ones too. How strong is Superman? He's super strong. Super strong. Do you know Superman's only weakness? A green kryptonite. That's right. That is right. You know a lot about your fandom. I like your costume. Everybody give it up for Remington. <laughs> up next, Ronin as Batman. The authority, Mr. Batman. Thanks for coming to see me. Why do you like Batman? Cause he can glide. You sound just like him. <laughs> Who's your favorite Batman villain? Uh, I don't know. You like Joker? Joker can't glide. That's right. Joker can't glide. But Batman can. What's your favorite Batman weapon? You like the batarangs? The boomerangs he throws? I like them too. <laughs> Everybody give it up for Rodin, the little Batman. How, how old are these guys? Rodin is four, Remington, seven. Four and seven, some young cosplayers. That's the future of cosplay right there, guys. Give it up. Now 
that was our last youth cosplay. Give a big round of applause for all of the youth cosplayers. They did amazing. We are going to take the shortest break while the judges deliberate so we can give the kids their prizes if they need to get home because we're going to be here for a while judging you adults. Adults, are you guys ready for your cosplay contest? All right. If you got to use the restroom or grab some water or something, now is the time. When we come back, we are here till we're done.
and we're about to find out the results. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> Mine's worse. Okay. We've got some winners. Kids, are you guys excited to see who won? Yeah. yeah. First, we've got some honorable mentions. When I call your name, you're going to come up here, and, and we're going to give you a round of applause because we appreciate the work you did on your costume and how you presented it. You're not going to win a prize, but we want to acknowledge you. So first, I need... Alistair and Oliver. I remember the names. The names aren't here. Alistair and Oliver. Come on up here, guys. You guys remember the assassin Pikachu? <laughs> Prince Charizard. Emma. Chainsaw Man Emma. I want to get you up here for an honorable mention. Come on up here so we can get some pictures of you. Remington and Ronin? Also, Remington and Ronin. That's my choice for the honorable mention. You guys, come on up here. We're going to take some pictures. Come on up here. Center stage for me. Oh, up over here, guys. Come on up. <laughs> Look at those smiles. A pencil, come on, come on. Give it up for your honorable mentions. Superman, Batman, Assassin Pikachu, Prince Charizard, and Chainsaw Man. Good stuff. Thank you so much, guys. Now, we've got some prizes to give away. Third place, $50. Oh, I can add it. Perfect. Perfect. In... Third place, Damon as Great Escape Freddy. Come on up here. Third place, Youth wins $50 and a kick-ass trophy. Aha. Yes, this is perfect. A presenter of prizes. Let's come over here. We got the kick-ass trophies. Give it up for Damon, everybody. That's your third place youth winner. Up next, second place, and $100 goes to Milo the Ghostbuster. Bring that proton pack up here. Over here, buddy. Right in between us. $100 and a kick-ass trophy for Milo. Thank you, Milo. Now for our first place winner, round of applause, please. Drum roll, please. First place, Allie as Draculaura. Come on up here and get your prize. $300 and a kick-ass trophy. Your first place winner, everybody. Give it up. <laughs> the kids really are the future of the cosplay. Let's give it up one more time. Big round of applause for all of our youths. Thank you so much for coming out. I love all of your costumes. Up next. My adults, who's ready for a costume contest? First up, first up, I need Eric as Asta. 
You are my rival! What? Oh, okay, you're right. Oh, parents, obviously, uh, we're done with the youth section, so if you guys need to get your kiddos home, you're welcome. We will miss you. Thank you so much, guys. Be safe. We'll see you next year. Come see me in Las Cruces for the next one. Third time that I did this cosplay, but I really need. I was gonna go with Goku uh, yesterday, but I went with Asta because I thought I was feeling nostalgic for this. But I ramp, ramp revamped it up so I could actually have his iconic shoes from the anime and update his uh, robe. I changed the robe to a much more sophistic robe. Robe. And then my sister helped me with the, we, we, we kept the stuff that we had in the previous one. At the sword. Ho, <laughs> ho. Yeah. Art! Paper mache it. it. It was my idea. Yeah. We took a pull. Yeah. What's up? Just watch closer there. Keep talking. You're good. Oh, right. Uh, we, we took, like, cardboard and then we paper mache it. it. And then my sister painted it right here. Well, for the base was the pool thing that you. It's a pool cube. It's a pool pool cube. Cool. And then uh, I actually made this part the sword guard. And What's the name of the sword? The Demon Slayer sword. That's good. I like Everybody, give it up for Eric. It's a hell of a cosplay. My magic is never giving up. I'm going to get results like no one has before. I'm going to do whatever it takes to become the Wizard King and prove you wrong. <laughs> Give it up for the Magical Knight, Asta. Soup. Soup as hiccup. Soup. Help, you got it? You got it? Over here on the back. Gotcha. Perfect. This costume, y'all. We got any How to Train a Dragon fans in the house? What's the name of that dragon you got on your back there? So this is Toothless. He's a Night Fury, and he's made of 12 meters of black felt. And he took, like, 50 pounds of stuffing to make. He's all handmade. I made the patterns, everything. And he can move and open his mouth. He can move his tail, and he can open and close his wings. Can you show that off for us? Oh, well, you're going to have to do it for me. Okay. <laughs> but you can pose them. There you go. Turn around. Open his mouth. <laughs> so what about, the, what about the rest of the costume? So I'm going to put him down real quick so you can see. So this armor, this is all entirely handmade. Everything that you see was made from scratch, including my pants. And so it took about three months for it all to be made. And so I have leather work. I have cloth work, sewing. Did you bind that book? Uh, no. I. That's the next step. So it's the Book of Dragons, if you guys recognize it. It's actually my wallet for the day. Let's step up to the front of the stage and take a spin for the, for the judges here. I'm just going to... Come over here with my new buddy. <laughs> Judge is taking some real close look. That is a very good, detailed costume. What you need? Soup. Everybody give it up for soup. Emma Paparia? Did I say that one right? Paparia. Man, this looks cool, and I'm not familiar, familiar with this. I'm excited to learn something. Posing. <laughs> Emma, tell me about Paparia. What is Paparia? Paparia was an independent film made 
in a three year time span. It is actually on YouTube and it is three minutes long. It was made by um, an independent artist. And um, yeah. Th three years for three minutes? Yes. Wow. Is it puparia or puparia? Puparia? Puparia. Interesting. So we can find that on YouTube? Yes. You recommend it? Yeah. Obviously, right? I want to check it out. How did you make your costume? So I ordered a bodysuit, and then I actually bought um, a lot of the fabric colors, and I had to mix it all in a really big bottle so that I didn't, like, have different shades of blue. And I had to take the bodysuit on and off to, like, map it out. It took a really <laughs> long time to, like... Three years? <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> or three minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about the makeup? Did you do the makeup yourself? Yes. Yes, I did the makeup. Um, I like to use a lot of face paints and um, colorful foundations. Um, and I do a lot of uh, SFX and body paint. Awesome. Why don't you take a spin and show it off for us? Emma as Puparia, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. Perfect. Got gotcha. you. Our judges are requesting that all of our contestants please walk in front of the judges panel here so they can examine your costumes. And ask you any further questions if they have any. Up next I got Yaz as Ellie Williams from The Last of Us. What's falling? Oh, no. We got it. We good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so why'd you choose Ellie Williams? Uh, I think she's really cool, and I had fun with the game. <laughs> nice. Did you watch the, 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 the series? I did. I did watch the series. What did you think of the series compared to the game? I, I really liked it. I thought it was a pretty faithful adaptation. They changed like things here and there, but it was pretty good. I had fun. Awesome. So tell me about your costume. Uh, majority of this was thrifted. Um, knife here is 3D printed. This one is foam. And then just buying everything and then kind of weathering it up. The, the weathering, you did, it, you, you did that yourself? Yes, I did all the weathering. And then this one I did make. A little, little strap. That's a start. That's good. What about the weapons? Did you do any work on the weapons or the backpack? Uh, weapons, arrows I made entirely myself. They're like wood, some feathers. Pull one of those out for us. Uh, I can't can you? Can I? Can you? If you want, let me show you actually. I want to check one of those out. There we go. Oh, th those look really good. They're feathery. Thank you so much, Yaz. Everybody give it up for Yaz as Ellie Williams. Why don't you walk, walk in front of the... Okay. Quick reminder, guys, let's use this staircase to avoid the electronics. And make sure you walk in front of the judges as you come up or down, or both. Um, Jeanette as Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. Yay. Over this way. There we go. How many people have seen Kiki's Delivery Service? How many people was that your first anime? <laughs> Nobody, really? Wow, okay. Jeanette, why Kiki? Because I used no face last time. Did that make sense? You're keeping it Ghibli. How did you make your costume? I crocheted all of it out of yarn. It's this is all crochet. It's a hundred percent crochet. Like it, as soon as you get close, even the even the bloomers, crochet. How long have you been crocheting? Uh, it's almost been eight years. Who taught you how to crochet? Myself, because mom didn't take me to any t classes. Give it up for self-taught cosplay. <laughs> mom tried. This looks great. What's what's the cat in the bag? That's Gigi. Gigi. Did you, and Gigi is fully crocheted. Yes. And the broom? Also crocheted. And the bag? Also crocheted. And the shoes? I bought them. Oh. <laughs> we were close. What is that? It's a radio. It's a crochet a crochet radio. <laughs> this this is a great costume. We really got to come and do a do a spin for everybody to see. Look at this Kiki. Jeanette, thank you so much. Fi 
Phoenix as Adam. Another has been hotel costume. Awesome. I'm learning so much. Phoenix, as someone who's never seen Has Been Hotel, how would you explain your character to me? Well, as my roommate over there, Stein, once pointed out to me, I always cosplay the really asshole and cocky characters. So that's really all you have to know is he is just over the top, really rude, but I love him. Like the, the antagonist of the show or just an antagonist? Uh, definitely the antagonist of season one. Okay, awesome. And uh, how do you watch the series? On Amazon. You can also pirate it. How do... <laughs> T tpbproxy.org. Um, so how did you make your costume? Yeah, so I bought this jacket, and then I got fabric paint. I painted both arms, uh, front and back. I painted the diamonds, these thingies, the stripe. Um, and then for the wings, I bought them and then took Velcro to attach them so I could take them on and off as I please. Did the lights come on the fabric? Yeah. So I just had to install like a little battery. There's like a little button here. Um, I initially did have a 3D printed mask that took five days to print and about four days to paint, but there were so many complications with it that I didn't want to bring it in fear of it breaking. And as judges, I want to show you proof of that so I can um, show you the photo, just because I don't want like you to think I'm making that up. <laughs> um, for like 3D printing is not a perfect science yet. <laughs> we're feeling it out, cosplayers. So um, the shoes, the cloak, what about these little, um, what are those, the, 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 the claws? Uh, he has these little like spikes on his thing, which I screwed into the fabric and then hot glued for extra protection. And then his shirt, he has a purple A on his jacket, but I thought that was overkill. So I did a yellow because his theme is mainly gold. Just make it a little original. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the hot glue adds to the stability of these claws too. They look pretty, yes. like they're not drooping at all. Looks good. Everybody give it up for Phoenix. Rissa as Professor Stein from Soul Eater, please make your way to the stage. Hold on, hold on, keep doing it, keep doing it. That is a satisfying click. I like that one. Rissa, why'd you choose Professor Stein? So Soul Eater was actively my first anime that I ever watched, and Stein was kind of the first character that stuck out to me, so this is a very meaningful costume for me to do. What, what is Stein, Stein's role in the anime? Uh, Stein is a very interesting character. Um, when you first meet him, you actively think he's going to be a villain, and he kind of he switches a lot. Sometimes he's like really cool. Sometimes he's just absolutely crazy, so he's... A very fun balance. Sounds like an anime character. How did you make your costume? With a lot of elastic. Um, the only stitches that are not elastic are actively the ones that are on my eye. It took about 24 yards to get all of them done between the sweater and the entirety of the jacket. The sweater is actively um, two um, different areas of fabric that I cut up and then sewed back together to create the zigzag pattern. And then the... Um, kind of same with the jacket, so uh, it's a mix of sewing and hot gluing to get the kind of more accurate stitch effect. The screw is um, EVA foam that I painted with the silver, and it's actively on a little plastic base so that I can spin it, and it makes that really satisfying click noise that he has in the anime. Uh, the stitch is practical as well. It's uh, spirit gum that I used to actually glue real thread to my eye because I thought that looked cooler. Yeah, it's real thread. That's not makeup. It's you can You can see it when you get closer, make sure you show the judges. Everybody give it up for Rissa, Professor Stein. <laughs> Today, we are live streaming. We've never live streamed a Comic-Con before. What do you guys think about that? We're moving into the digital world. The whole country, the whole world is going to see this. This is cool. Up next, we've got Ryan as a crus crusader from Dante's Inferno.
on the X foot. Over there. Perfect, right there. So Ryan, how is the Inquisition? Uh, it's going pretty well so far. Oh, it's still active. Oh yeah. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm more involved in the Crusades in the Middle East right now, so that's going pretty well. Excellent. Why did you choose this cosplay? Well, to me, the Crusader is a perfect example of a holy warrior, just a common soldier who doesn't do it for money. He does it for his own belief. So I believe it's a noble cause. What is your costume made of? Mostly metal, a bit of canvas. Uh, this is plastic. How heavy is that chainmail? It's about 30 pounds. Do you have the, the chainmail hood? I do, yeah. Can we see that? Yeah. Got to get you a sheath. <laughs> Where'd the sheath go? Does that ever pinch your ears? No, not really. Oh, you got fabric under it. How, how accurate is this cloth armor and chainmail? Uh, probably not the most. The cloth's probably the most accurate thing. This is a uh, budded mail, so it's not exactly. It's aluminum. I don't think it's what they really used. Did you make the chain? Uh, no, I did not. What about the the cloth? Uh, none of this I made myself, except for like parts of like the sword. This was all black, so I painted it and uh, outfitted like a little like hand tape around it. Put this little rosary on there too. This cross, however, this came all the way from Jerusalem, the Holy Land. It's made out of olive wood. And it's been blessed. Wow. wow, that's a good touch. That's a great touch. Um, the pants, what are those made of? Uh, I think this is canvas too. This is a, a gift to me from a friend who went to a Ren fair. So. Cool. And it, where'd you get the belt? That's a really a nice belt. Another friend of mine who was in the uh, SEA, which basically they do a lot of like, uh, they dress up in real armor and beat each other with sticks. So they like they like doing a lot of the medieval stuff. They're actually in uh, they meet up in Sunland Park sometimes in El Paso. They're worth checking out. SCA and Ampguard, if you guys ever want to step your cosplay into some reality, check those out. LARPing is cool. Everybody give it up for Ryan the Crusader. Straight out of Jerusalem. Abraham. Nightmare Batman. You guys calling him Ham? Is that a nickname? We going Ham with Batman. Right uh, there. Abraham, what made you choose Nightmare Batman out of the other Batmans? Because Affleck is the bomb as Batman, yo. Who likes Ben Affleck as Batman? What about Christian Bale? What about Michael Keaton? That's my Batman. So, what what uh, arc is Nightmare Batman from? Batman is from the Snyderverse arc, and he's from the Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League films. Excellent. How did you put your costume together? So, this was a seven-month process of uh, molding and casting flexible foam and urethane rubber. Uh, the full suit is actually a full suit. It's not just the top torso. And the fabric is actually from a company in Torreon, Mexico, who makes uh, specialized uh, 3D textured fabric for films. And uh, I commissioned the fabric from them and glued it onto a muscle suit that was casted and molded. That looks great. What about the, the utility belt? How'd you make that? So the, util the utility belt is actually a utility belt I had as a gift. Uh, it's like a, a, a Batman utility belt? Yes. Yes, and um, like the coat and everything else I modified and weathered and the weapons as well I modified and weathered and I actually had to modify the barrel of this scar because the scar was shorter so I made it into more of a the Batfleck scar gun. Abraham, I got one more question for you. Who are you? I am Ham. <laughs> Give it up for Ham! Mario as Mojo Jojo.
<laughs> so Mario, how, how many people don't know who Mojo Jojo is? Let me see your hands. Explain to us, what, what is Mojo Jojo from? He's from an old show called Powerpuff Girls from the 90s, and he's like an evil monkey. <laughs> who is your favorite Powerpuff Girl? Uh, Buttercup. <laughs> Buttercup's a good one. How did you make your costume? I uh, made it in the day. So this up here, the helmet, it's a, it's just a mix of cardboard and foam. The mask is foam with an elastic band, belt foam, and everything else is just like fabric. And the belts, I'm um, sorry, the shoes, they're just um, slip-ons. But I, it's been so old, so at this point, I've just been editing it more and more and more. Just keep adding to it and coming, and awesome. The layering on the mask looks really good. I like that. Makes it look authentic. <laughs> All right, everybody, give it up for Mario. Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Annabelle as Sophie Hatter from Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, it's okay. She found it. She got the hat. Crisis averted. Annabelle, what made you cho choose Sophie Hatter? She's very headstrong and very stubborn, and she is a good leader, and she's from my very first Studio Ghibli movie, so I really like her. That's awesome. What, what, who's your friend there? This is Calcifer. He's uh, the fire demon in the movie. So I made him, I brought him into a little lamp so he can come with me. How did you make Kelsfer? So the inside of the lamp, it's tissue paper and there's LED lights in there. And I cut the little eyes out from paper. So he actually glows. I don't know if you can see him flickering away in there. There's little tea lights in the back. I see the lights. The fire. <laughs> can we kill the lights? Can we do that real quick? Just real quick, real quick. Oh, I didn't know it was going to take all that. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> I was hoping there was like one master switch. Like, we just cut the power. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Back on. Thank you. We got some other friends here. Uh, those suit sprites are great. A whole jar. And the, the stars? What are the stars? Star candies that they eat. So I put them on the outside of the jar to decorate it. And I've been handing these little guys out at con today. So a few people have gotten them. Um, and so I've got a whole little jar full of them. Do you want one? I do want one. Yay! I got a soot sprite! Y'all give it up for Annabelle. Oh, tell, tell us real quick how you made your costume. So the entire dress and everything, it's made completely from scratch. I made it myself. Um, it was the first dress I've ever made. It was a bit of a complicated sewing process. Um, so the apron I made, the dress I made, from a pattern that I altered to include the puff sleeves and some of the extra details that fit the costume a little better. Um, in the hat, I added the ribbon and I made the flower bouquet myself and added that on as well. It's a great cosplay. Everybody give it up for Annabelle. Make sure you walk in front of the judges. Angel. Angel from Genshin Impact. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you tell us what character this is. <laughs> Give it up for Angel, guys. We in here. We cosplaying. Get loud. Angel, what? I can't pronounce this. What is your costume? A P.O. gem. Pio gem, Prio gem, from what? The currency for wishes, to wish for characters. Oh, okay. For in Genshin Impact. Oh, that's the game. You are the currency from the game. Kind of, kind of. It's just for the wishes for the characters. Oh, okay. This that's kind of creative. I like it. How'd you make your costume? Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Went all the way to the jungle to get this costume. <laughs> so what made you choose why 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 do you want to be a currency? 
Uh, who wants characters? Hey, they all want you. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are saying, but y'all have stuff to say. <laughs> y'all can come tell y'all can come tell Angel yourselves. Give it up for Angel, everybody. Uh, Victoria as Guts from Berserk. Victoria! <laughs> Guts is from Berserk. That's an anime, right? Uh, yes, but it, the manga's better. <laughs> the manga's better. Usually, right? Yeah. So what made you choose Guts? Um, he's a powerful character. Um, he's noble. Um, I just like him. Wh what, is y what is your character's role in the, in the manga? Um, <laughs> well, he fights, you know people <laughs> does he fight bad guys or good guys like demons oh. demons that's cool what made you choose berserk um i thought it's just an interesting story well you know <laughs> manga it's pretty dark oh okay the kids are gone okay <laughs> why don't you tell us what your costume is made of um it's made of uh eva foam velcro this is made from cardboard and foam too and then like little towel cardboard here too uh, and the cape is just you know a uh, black fabric what parts of the costume are the foam that you made all of it um what's this Ooh, this is oh it's part of the helmet hold on that's the bottom part of the helmet yep. so, so is he like a shark face thing it's a uh, it's supposed to be a wolf oh i like it awesome everybody give it up for victoria guts Natasha. Auzios? Auzios. From Licorice Cookie. Natasha, everybody. <laughs> Natasha Auzios from... Um, it's pretty much my character cosplaying as a character. <laughs> so this is your personal creation? Yeah, <laughs> technically. And how, how does your character communicate? Um, he doesn't really communicate. He's just kind of like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so Licorice Cookie, what is that? Um, Licorice Cookie is from a game. He's kind of like a goofy villain. <laughs> a goofy villain? Yeah. What what kind of game is it? Um, it's kind of like a game where you can like decorate, you can fight, and it also has like a story. How long have you been working on this costume? Um, a few months. And how did you make it? Whoa, the head? All I had was a base for it, which I made the rest. The tail I also made. With uh, my own pattern, it's huge, it's heavy, it, get me away from it. <laughs> Paws I bought, and then the scythe is a remade Spirit Halloween scythe that I had to custom make in four days. Awesome, it looks great. So, you said your character is a character cosplaying another character? Yes. <laughs> what, what's the base character and what's the cosplay? Ozios, which is like the dog thing, is the character. Uh -huh. 
and a licorice cookie is the thing that he has caused. Oh, I get it now. Everybody give it up for Natasha. Chris as Moxie from Hell of a Boss. What what are you doing there? What do you, what do you got there? That's not that's not what? Ah! I knew it! I knew this was gonna happen. So Crumbs, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to shoot you. You ate. The Chris, what made you choose Moxie? Uh, I just really love Hell of a Boss. The show's so amazing, and Moxie's one of my favorite characters, and I feel like I relate to him so much. I, I like your costume. I haven't seen the show yet, but I've I've had a Moxie winner, so maybe maybe you're next. How did you make your costume? Uh, so most of it is just bought. Um, I know I... <laughs> I wasn't expecting it that time. That one wasn't meant. That was an accident. Um, but like the gun, I um, hand painted. And I one of my little music notes had fallen. So thankfully, Royal Kind helped quickly fill it in for me. And the horns, I had hand painted myself too. What about the the bow tie, the tail? Did you put work into those? Uh, no. So these were also these had came with costume. I will say the only thing that was worked on was there's a fish line which is actually a support string. Yes, which is holding my tail. Mm-hmm. Because my tail can be bendable, like I can bend it into different formations if needed. It looks great. Everybody, give it up for Chris. All right, up next, we've got Arlene as Mimikyu. How many Pokemon players we got in the house? How many people know the tragic story of Mimikyu? Oh, man, heart-wrenching. Heart -wren she just wants to fit in, y'all. Let's let her know. Does Mimikyu fit in at, co at costume at Comic-Con? That's right. I love your costume. It's Mimikyu! Or is it Pikachu? I can't tell. Arlene, how long have you been into Pokemon? A long time. What gen? What gen did you get in on? Oh, first gen. <laughs> first gen, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's kind of up to where I got to. <laughs> so why did you choose Mimikyu? Oh, I kind of feel a lot like BBQ. Don't we all? <laughs> We're all here wearing costumes just like Mimikyu. Is Mimikyu your favorite Pokemon? Yes. It, it, was, it was Pikachu, and then I saw Mimikyu, I was like, yeah. That's, that's the heart, right? <laughs> so, do you play the Pokemon video games? Uh, I used to, not anymore. Oh, did you ever use Mimikyu in your battles? No. <laughs> not a very strong Pokemon in the video games. So, how'd you make your costume? Uh, so, it was like co a cosplay crunch. Um, cause oh, yeah, of course. It, it, it was a, a cosplay crunch because I wanted to use it before uh, Pokemon Day. <laughs> so, I found the Potter online for a kind of poncho. Um, so, I followed that version to sew it. And I cut it short enough so it's following the pattern on the bottom for BBQ. Uh, I bought some um, double XL pants to do the arms. So that's pockets so I can reach stuff and I'm not limited to <laughs> having everything slip. Function and form. Yes. A and saving money because <laughs> uh, fabric can be really expensive sometimes. Uh, it's inside us with stuffed in so it has the cloth. Um, I freehanded the pattern for the ears and it does have a magnet stuck to the wig so it's not moving around too much. Is that how you get it to keep the form with magnets? Uh, for the, uh, it's stuffed so the form keeps itself but the hood is um, magnetized to the wig so it's not falling back. Unless like someone pulls it and the wig <laughs> comes flying too. <laughs> And then it has uh, a tail in the back, 
as well. What about this card? How long did this card take to make? So I started yesterday at 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday at 8? <laughs> Whoa! In total, it was about five, six hours, I, I think. Is this an actual Pokemon card? Yes, it is an actual Pokemon card. It's basically everything uh, uh, accurately, except this little background has some trees, but everything else is exactly as the card. Um, it's one of my favorite cards, too, because she just looks so cool with the hands. But yeah. That's all. Arlene. Everybody give it up for Arlene. Some of y'all's costumes are big. You're knocking me around. Let's see here. Who's next? Apollonia as Sheik. Oh, yeah. We got any uh, Legend of Zelda fans in the house? Man, that's my favorite franchise. Apollonia, what made you choose Sheik? Uh, she, when I was playing Legend of Zelda, um, Sheik was my favorite when they first appeared. And I love the way they play the harp in the game. How'd you make your costume? Um, I had made it from head to toe, and it took a lot of time just to make the pattern. Um, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, you're doing good. Uh, so... Do you have a do you have a secret identity? Of course you don't. What a, what a good assassin! Everybody, give it up for Apollonia. <laughs> Delta as Adam Torres from Ruby. We got any Ruby fans in the house? <laughs> w Delta, why Adam Torres? He's just my favorite villain. Um, he was very underestimated compared to Cinder. How did you make your costume? Uh, this funny thing called money. <laughs> money makes the cosplay go around. Is the, the mask is 3D printed, yeah? Uh, yes, I got it commissioned off of Etsy. Uh, roughly for 30 bucks. And the jacket and everything? Uh, that was all a combined piece for that I found on AliExpress. What about your sword? Uh, from someone that I kind of know on Etsy. It's a uh, Nerds Beans Creations. They do uh, EVA foam uh, props, and it, they're actually a really good price. Awesome. Looks great. Everybody give it up for Delta. I will make it my mission to destroy everything you love, starting with her. I, I'm glad I'm not her, for sure. Kahala? Is that right? Kahala. Kahala as Bowsette. How many people have seen the Super Mario Bros. movie? How many people have seen it twice? How many people have seen it six times? <laughs> I love that movie. The original, I don't know how original it was. Well, it was pretty original compared to the game. With John Leguizamo, you guys seen that one? Kahala, what made you choose Bowsette? Well, I've always wanted to be Bowsette. Um, since <laughs> around middle school, when I seen the meme, I was like, oh, yeah, that's what I got to do. I got to be her. <laughs> How did you put your costume together? So some of it's sewn, some of it's bought, but it's modified. And uh, most of it is EVA foam and put together, sewn, all that. What about your wig? Oh, the wig. The wig. Um, you know, I, I styled the wig, but I bought it. 
Mm-hmm. Looks good. What about the backpack? Show us off the backpack. That was made by me. Okay. Everything was made by me and painted. Very well done. <laughs> it looks great. Everybody give it up for Kahala. Make sure you show your show the judges. Asher as Rainbow. We coming up over here now, by the way. Uh, uh, announcement, we're coming up over here, and we are leaving over there. Okay? Yeah. Quick update. Thanks for the support. Appreciate you guys. I'll be here all night. Ranbu is from, from Dream what? Dream SMP. Dream SMP, what is that? Um, it is a Minecraft server that ended uh, about a year ago-ish. And what, what is Rainbow's role in that server? Um, he is part of the syndicate, who is basically a group to take down the government. <laughs> and the government is part of Lumanberg, which is the country there. And basically the entire show is just a war over ending the nation. I'm saying it wrong. Is it Ranbu? Uh, yeah, it's Ranbu. Uh -huh. So how'd you put your costume together? Um, most of it was a gift from a friend, actually. You got a soot sprite. I do. So the character has these little like purple balls of fluff that fly around him called boobers. <laughs> so my friend gave me the soot sprite. And Perfect addition. Yeah. And then I have little crystals that I'm also giving to people. Then I have a the flag to their nation after the war ended between Lemanberg and the Syndicate. And then I have his book because it's called his memory book and he has memory issues. So he writes down everything he knows in the book. What's all the green lines? Is that significant? Um, so the character during the, his arc basically gets controlled by the char a character called Dream. And when he's asleep or sees a smiley face, um, he gets controlled by him. And he's basically his puppet. So that's what the string is. And how did you make the book? Um, it was just a composition notebook. And then I put um, like a small layer of cardboard over it and then painted it. And then I put cardboard on the corners and then made the eyes out of hot glue. Everybody give it up for Asher. <laughs> Ranboo. Rachel, eosinophil, did I say that right? I said it right. Yeah, I've seen cells at work. How about you guys? I like the science animes. Rachel, why an eosinophil? Um, I'm a biologist. <laughs> and my husband, who's Killer T, um, he wanted me to start watching anime, and it's not like Jane Austen. <laughs> and so he started me with Cells at Work because it's an immunology based chick flick anime. Yeah. Have you ever seen Dr. Stone? No, not yet. I think Dr. Stone is in your next one. Okay. What is an eosinophil? What is an eosinophil's role as a biologist? Um, so one of my favorite undergrad classes was medical parasitology, and eosinophils, one of their main roles is killing parasites, and so that's what this fork is for. So if I was a parasite, how would you kill me with that fork? Very carefully. <laughs> uh, oh. Germ's dead. Everybody give it up for Rachel. Salvador, brother, bring it on up here. Are you guys ready for the Hulkamania? <laughs> I 
how much theme, how many different theme songs has he had? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> hey. So we got the Hulk here. What version of Hulk are you? Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And is Hollywood Hulk Hogan your favorite version of Hulk? My personal favorite of all time, yes. Nice. So what made you choose, what, how did you put your costume together? Uh, Amazon. A lot of Amazon. We, a lot of us go to the jungle for our, for our costumes here. <laughs> so what title is this here? This is a WCW World Heavyweight Championship. And all it's missing is a, stra is a spray paint, but you know what? I might want to get a spray painted by Hogan himself one day, so. Oh, good luck. That sounds awesome. Does your, does your shirt rip away? Uh, I don't have the body to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody give it up for Salvador as Hulk Hogan. What you gonna do when Hollywood Hulk Hogan and the New World Order run wild on you? That's a good one. Lily, spammed him, spammed in G, spammed him, spammed in G, spammed him from Delta Ruin. I'm unfam Lily, I'm unfamiliar with Delta Ruin. For for an, an ignorant um, get sh host like me, wh how would you explain it? Uh, Delta Ruin is a game based in a alternate reality of Undertale, where uh, these kids find st stumble upon a dark world where uh, normal objects come to life. I'm, I'm mesmerized with the little video you got here. Is this Delta Ruin? Yes. I like that. What made you choose Spamptim G Spamptim? Uh, Spamptim is my favorite character. Uh, I enjoyed Chapter 2 when it came out. It came out my freshman year of high school, and I was very excited when it came out. And Spamptim has always been the most fun in that chapter. <laughs> Explain to us how you constructed your costume. Um, it was a lot of work. We built the head out of foam. Uh, me and my mom. My mom helped with putting on the fabric, creating the glasses. Um, I created this, the little chest piece and the hand cannon. Uh, she helped with the hair and the wings. She made the wings. How did you mold the face? Um, it was all it was all foam. It was all building a building a base like a cylinder, and then adding onto it with other foam and cutting away from it. Everybody give it up for Lily, I spammed him, G spammed him. <laughs> we've got, we, we've got, looks like about 10 more contestants. How are you guys doing out there? We still awake? We having fun? Up next, I've got Adelie as Bonnie. The FNAF costumes. There we go. We made the stairs. Adelie, Bonnie, why Bonnie? Um, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. It's my favorite character overall, the whole franchise. And um, I chose the movie version because... Are you sure? <laughs> okay. And I chose the movie version because I guess it's most familiar to the kids. And so the main reason I did this was because of them. Because I enjoy seeing them happy and how they interact with each other. They're like, oh, that's Bonnie! That's great. That's great. Thinking about the kids when you're when you're taking consideration in your cos cosplay. How long did this cosplay take you to make? Um, about the end of November. So that's like four months. Yeah. How did you make it? Um, I made this with foam, fabric, and a lot of hot glue. <laughs> what about the guitar? I want to know about the guitar. So the guitar is painted. It's 
cardboard and I stringed it up with yarn. Some of the details are made with slick paint, which is that paint that dries kind of 3D. It looks kind of like duct tape after it dries. Um, kind of forgot about that. <laughs> there is duct tape. Oh, there is duct tape too. I'm pointing it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one feature I'd like to show everybody, but if you could point your mic towards my nose. I don't know what that means. <laughs> High five me. Everybody give it up for Adelie. <laughs> Somebody's got to tell me what that means later. <laughs> Rebecca Makizenin. Makizenin. Oh, oh. That's why I've never heard it. It's an original concept. Here we go. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? Yeah, didn't she didn't fall. Everybody give it up for not falling on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so original concept, Maki Zenin. Can you tell me what that means? Yeah, so this is an anime from Jujutsu Kaisen, and this character is so cool. She's my favorite. But the original concept actually is a fan art. I don't know if some of you guys have seen it, but I really liked it. That's awesome. So how did you construct your costume? So the dress is a, mo is a dress that my mom gave me, actually, and I just repurposed it. I did the slits. Um, I glued it together. Um, scars, my friends helped me. They had to go to the restroom, so they're not here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the scars took a hot minute. Give it up for friends in cosplay. Make sure the friends in the bathroom can hear it. <laughs> what about the sword? Tell me a little bit more about the sword. So this is all handmade. It's kind of, uh, it's something. So the core is made out of cardboard. Um, everything else is made out of styrofoam. I spray painted it myself. This rag used to be a shirt from H&M. What's the f what's the the f the hair the fur what is wh what is that on the what does it have teeth? It does have teeth. Yeah, I baked it. W I got um baked clay, I think it's called, and then I just detailed the work, and then this shaggy thing. I just bought it at Michaels. I was like, that's gonna work. Um, and yeah, it's hefty. She hefty. Yeah. It looks great. Everybody, give it up for Rebecca. Ulysses, Thunderhammer, from Warhammer 40K. <laughs> Watch the tripod. Cleared it. All right. Man, there's nothing more that I love than a chain sword. Yeah. Look at this. Ulysses, what is a thunder hammer? You mean a thunder warrior. What is a thunder warrior? A thunder, if you know, a thunder warrior is a predecessor of the space marine from the, from the game Warhammer 40K Millennium. See, I'm familiar with Space Marines. I didn't know how, so how do the Thunder Warriors transition into the Space Marines? Oh, they didn't. The reason, the reason why is because when Earth, well, Terra, it was it's called, was in a post-apocalyptic world filled with cannibals and techno-barbarians. The Emperor actually got his, follow his followers and literally Frankensteined them into genetic super soldier, which at, after the reinforcation of Terra, after finish the end of the Age of Strife, he killed them. Because so that's why they didn't become space marines because they're dead. Because they're uncontrollable. Oh, uh, okay. So for those of us who don't know what for Warhammer 40K is, what is it? It's a a battle strategy which the lore is completely insane if you are if you don't know what you're doing. How did you construct your costume? Probably the most important question. Right. You see, 
when I was making the costume, I it, I did not use a template at all. I would just went go all out, all out, and apparently it worked out well. Just going by feel and by vision, just how it looks and changing it. Yep. The inside, the inside of the of the armor is made out of a thick layer of cardboard to make it. It's basically the skeleton, while the outside is all foam. Tell me about the chain sword. Ah, the, the classic chain sword. The chain sword was I made the chain sword like like a year a year ago because I wanted to make a a cha- uh, a chain sword, but when I looked at it, I didn't even time I didn't even finish it. But when I Comic Con was coming, I realized oh maybe this would be a good opportunity to finish it, so I did. I'm glad you took the opportunity. I like it. What about the backpack? Turn around. Show me that. Ah, uh, the jet. Uh, the 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 jet engine. The, uh, this right here was the challenging part because originally I thought I was going to glue these pieces together, but I realized, no, that's not going to fit the car. So, what? That's not going to fit the car. It's a good reason not to put it on your cosplay. Right. So it's connected by a really strong super ma- uh, magnet attached to it, and that's how it attaches to your back. Yep. yep. Two two magnets that are very strong that are specifically meant for power tools. Do you, do you mind if I show them? Sure. Here, hold this. Can I say something? Can I say something? For everyone in this entire world of the Holy Land of Terra, you must understand. Prepare yourself for war, because this will be your final and last battle. For the Emperor! For the Emperor! Give it up for Ulysses, everybody. Thank you so much. Josh Graves as Captain America. Oh. Oh. That was cool. Avengers, I need you all to say. Avengers! Louder. Avengers! So, who unfroze you and sent you to me? <laughs> uh, I think you did when you called me up, sir. <laughs> I have that effect. I do have that effect. So, Josh, what made you choose Captain America? Uh, he's just the first Avenger, and he is the leader. Uh, I am, too, an active duty member of the United States military. Thank you for your service. So, uh, I am actually captain in the United States of America. This is the closest thing we got to Captain America right here. <laughs> How did you construct your costume? A very painful, very painful process. Uh, went online, cosplaypro.com. Um, <laughs> I will not lie, because uh, this is fully assembled from there. The shield is uh, Antiqua. Uh, it's actually made of vibranium. And so uh, that's like the most expensive part, for sure. That hurt. My finger hurts now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty heavy. Did, the, did you do the weathering, or did they do the weathering? Um, weathering was both intentional and unintentional just from time worn. That's a loved costume right there. Everybody give it up for Ulysses. Wait, this isn't Ulysses. Josh Graves, Captain America. Thank you. And I know that this is all bought, but, uh, judges, you have to vote for America's ass, so thank you. No, no, no. Ah. Oh. Y'all got what you want. Are you happy? Are you not entertained? Otter? Otter Hoople? Otter? As Shaggy from Scooby Apocalypse. Man, that's Shaggy, right? So why, in particular, the um, 
Scooby Apocalypse version of Shaggy. It's one of my favorite comics, and it was the first comic I actually read. And in that one, uh, Shaggy's really different. He's a dog tamer, actually, in a government facility where Scoob, Scrappy, and all these other dogs are experiments, and Scoob is the runt this time. And then there's um, there ends up being an apocalypse because Belma's brothers decide they want to rule the world, and then they mess up. That is a crazy Scooby-Doo storyline. Holy cow. One of the lines Scooby says is, are there children here? Yes, there are. You can hear one crying. So, uh, there's a, there's a curse word, so I apologize. No Fuck that. That's a monster. I'm going home. <laughs> How did you construct your costume? So, I found out about this con like three days ago. And originally, I was not going to, but then I realized I had my old shaggy costume, which I bought, which was the shirt and the pants. So, I added the flannel, which I'll show the judges a picture of his actual outfit but um i did all the makeup this morning which took me about i think 40 minutes 40 45 minutes which i hate makeup i'm gonna be honest <laughs> it's it's hard to get used to well no it just wear wore it off throughout the day and i didn't bring makeup <laughs> are you gonna enter the cost the tattoo contest tomorrow uh maybe if i'm here where's tattoo gets cover up we're, uh, nah, i'm good because <laughs> <laughs> so uh otter uh, did you do the weathering on the jacket yeah, and everything? I did. Uh, that's uh, all makeup that I did this morning. I uh, did it on the I did it on the pants you can't see, but I did it on the shirt and the well the flannel and the shirt, and then I also did the dirt on the bandage, and now it looks like blood, which actually ends up being pretty cool. Works out. And um, a cool fact is I didn't realize it. So I have a bad knee, but Shaggy ends up getting shot in the knee <laughs> it, later on, and that's how I got hurt in my knee. So it worked out. That's dedication to cosplay. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Otter. <laughs> Lindsay G, Melanie Martinez, Albumo Portals. I do too. Where are we at? Where's she at? Oh, we covered it? Ah. Aha. Lindsay, Melanie Martinez, obviously the singer, correct? So what inspired you to pick this cosplay? Um, we'll be here all day if I talk about it. <laughs> but um, I really love Melanie Martinez because with her music and her art, she opened up my, my eyes. You know. All four of them. All four of them, definitely. <laughs> so how did you construct your costume? Um, I was on a really short budget. Funny story, I have to tell my... Uh, fiance's parents to buy me bed sheets for my birthday. No, que no questions asked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, this is technically bed sheets, um, 3D printed. The suit is from Amazon, which is was very expensive, and it hurt my wallet. <laughs> how, how did you construct? Like, did you stuff the sheets with stuffing? Yes, it was um, a cruel cool process. We had to cut it. Um, into circles and then put it stuff in like what's it called <laughs> the stuffing into the circles and then tie them and hot glue them into wires it looks great everybody give it up for Lindsay G <laughs> Metal Sonic I will ask you your name when you get up here. <laughs> Be real careful on those stairs. There you go. You got another hand over here if you need it. There you go. Got it. Hello. 
So what's your name? Oh, so I'm Zero Point Sanity. Zero Point Sanity. That's your name. Zero Point Sanity has Metal Sonic. Yes. Um, technically, Neo Metal Sonic, but I was going for a uh, post Sonic hero, so this is Battle Damaged Neo Metal Sonic. Battle Damage, Neo Metal Sonic. And that voice modulator is awesome. Thank you. So how did you construct the costume? Um, so I started the head base. <laughs> I started the head base back in September. Um, I do struggle with my mental health, so I took a break from it. Um, but <laughs> uh, meant, uh Manic episode me thought I can make a costume in a week, so I made the rest of the costume this week. Wow, wow! Don't overstress yourselves, cosplayers. Take breaks when you need to for your mental health. Absolutely, great idea. Love the costume. So, how is it constructed? Okay, so the head is constructed with poster board, uh, EVA foam, uh, aluminum, aluminum foil. And it is coated with epoxy resin. The eyes is plexiglass. And the rest of the body is a combination of cardboard, poster board, and duct tape. What was, your, what was the hardest part about making this costume? <laughs> um, the plexiglass. This is the first time I worked with this material. It stinks when you cut it. <laughs> it, it stinks when you cut it? It smells bad? It smells really bad. <laughs> uh, I used a rotary tool to uh, cut the shape of the eyes. Uh, that was honestly the hardest and scariest part to do. It looks great. Obviously, give the, ch the judges a, a chance to look closer. Everybody give it up for Zero Point Sanity. <laughs> We've got a few more here before we move on to the groups. Ingrid as Skull Kid. How many people, Majora's Mask is your favorite Zelda game? It's a good one. Ingrid, why did you choose Skull Kid? Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game and also my brother's favorite Zelda game, so I knew he would buy me the mask if I asked for it. You wanna do <laughs> <laughs> Knew it. You wanna do the skull the skull thing? <laughs> How did you construct the costume besides getting your brother to buy you the mask? Well oh well he bought the mask, but I did paint it myself. And the hat is made of foam, the shoes are made of foam. I modeled them after like costume shoes, you know, they don't have the real bottoms. The clothes are thrifted. I made the gloves out of the scraps of the shirt. What about the bag? The bag is also thrifted, and I got it because it kind of reminded me of the jars in Zelda. I think you did a great job of painting the mask. Everybody give it up for Ingrid. <laughs> Skull Kid. Liza as Haku Chihiro from Spirited Away. It's Haku, y'all. So, Haku, what made you choose Haku? I just really love his character. I fell in love with him. Is Spirit Away your favorite anime? Yeah, I, I fell in love with it when I first watched it. And Haku's your favorite character. Is this home all homemade? Yeah, uh, it was all homemade. I, uh, I u basically used paper mache to make him as a base, and then later I used fabric to put him all over. And to make his like hair, I used a rug that I found on Walmart because <laughs> I couldn't find the fabric. You can find cosplay materials anywhere. Did you do the painting of the face? Yeah, the 
nose and everything like that is makeup, and then the eyes I use pa- uh, paint too. And the horns, how how did you construct those? Those were also paper mache, but then I put like l- uh, leather on top of it. And his scales underneath? He's got scales underneath? Yeah. Yeah, he has. Uh, in order to make the scales, I had to do paper, use foam and use like a marker to outline it to make it look like it's actually scales. Is he attached to you? No, I could take him off. You want to hold him up for everybody to see? Great work. Everybody give it up for Liza. Andrea as Rapunzel from Tangled. She's the last adult. Last adult. Andrea, you look very princessly. Thank you. What made you choose um, Rapunzel? She's my favorite Disney princess. And how did you construct your costume? It's made from scratch. My brother and I made it down to sewing the individual roses. How, how do you sew individual roses? One by one. <laughs> uh, did you do the, do the wig as well? Yes, I did. How did you do the wig? Take me through your process. <laughs> Elaborate for me. Well, the dress is um, an original design. Um, in the Tangled series, I like that they use this color, so we, l- we incorporated into this original design. And then the wig is a base, and um, the, <laughs> the braid is sewn to the base. It looks great. What was, what was your favorite part about making the costume? Spending time with my brother. Oh, give it up for brothers in cosplay. <laughs> is your brother here? Brother, what's up? Where you at, brother? Hey, brother, how you doing? Thank you, this is great. Um, is there anything else you want to say about your costume? It's great. Everybody give it up for Andrea and Andrea's brother. <laughs> Spend more time with your siblings. That is our final adult. Let's give a big round of applause for all of our adult contestants out here working hard, cosplaying their little hearts out. All right, we're going to move right on to the groups. Groups, quick reminder, please come up here this way. We're gonna, we got a black X. This is the mark. Please hit the mark and exit this way. Make sure you pass by the judges on your way out so they can take a closer look at your costumes. But first, I got to know, who's ready for the group cosplay contest? We got a lot of groups this time. I'm excited. Poppy and Branch from Trolls. I wonder I wonder if they're taller than me with their hair. Let's find out. We got any fans of the Trolls franchise, the movies in the house? The new Trolls with the boy band theme? Oh, that hit me in the childhood. I wanted to be a Backstreet Boy so bad. Whoa. Will you? Join the band? Of course I will. I thought you'd never ask. You know me too well. (laughs) Ah, got you. (laughs) Who started crying? A little bit, a little bit. I did a little bit. All right. So, Branch and Poppy, trolls. What what made you guys choose? I've seen y'all before. Yeah. Are you going to fall? What's happening? That's me. <laughs> I'm heavy, apparently. <laughs> so wh- what was the, your favorite part about making these costumes? I know you guys make a lot of your costumes. So what was the funnest part about putting this one together? Um, it would definitely have to be my... Sorry, <laughs> grab the mic. Um, it would definitely have to be my dress. Um, this is all crocheted. This is a west uh, waistcoat stitch. Um, this has about, I don't know how much yarn. I got like a bunch of colors. <laughs> um, this is the best part, and as well as the leg warmers. This was used by a 30 millimeter um, size hook. 
And oh, you can hold tiny diamonds. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, and then that's the same thing with the leg warmers. It was made by the same hook. Um, that's basically my best, my favorite part. I don't know if you had another question. Oh, I got, lo I got lots more questions. Is this crocheted? Yes, he is crocheted. <laughs> yes, he is crocheted. This is just a single um, stitch crocheted. Um, started with a ball, and then that's there. And tell me, tell me about Branch's costume. Here, take this. Okay, thank you. So. Um, I sewed uh, the vest, um, and then these were thrifted pants that we just put fabric on top. We glued it on. Um, this is this vest has about, <laughs> I would want to say an estimate of 40, 50 bucks of felt. <laughs> the reason for that is he can go ahead and have a reversible vest for the boy band outfit. <laughs> Hit us up later, and we'll do some Backstreet Boys. <laughs> So um, yeah, and then as well as the bodysuit, um, this was also uh, made. We made our own bodysuits. For the slippers, um, they're Bigfoot slippers, and the, the most funniest thing ever was that, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those hobbit feet, they're hairy. So I had to ask my man to shave them for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, get yourself a man that can shave your big feet, <laughs> your hairy big feet. <laughs> and then um, his hug time bracelet, if you want to have it up. Um, this is just like a snap bracelet that we found, and um, we constructed the flower, and well, the flower itself has out of uh, foam clay. And his hair is um, is an oh, it's two p it's two wigs. So we deconstructed them. Oh, 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 okay. You wanna straighten your straighten your head, but we're trying to figure out. Yeah, you he's taller than you. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like seven feet tall at the top of this. That's a lot of hair. <laughs> Thank you. So the way that this was constructed is um, it's wiry. Um, so it's like a ring, and then there's another ring right here, and then there's like like some panels right here too. Like they were just like um, covered with like packaging tape to make the structure. And then it's covered with batting and then covered with hair. So yeah. Oh, and our ears, um, we both have ears. We've got them from like Hot Topic, but we added more structure to it because we don't want them pointy. We don't want we want them troll-like. So we added a uh, foam clay onto that and we painted them. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I think that's it. I have a hug time bracelet too. Oh yeah, my crown. My crown is also crocheted and braided. And then this is following EVA foam. I'm trying to remember. Okay, we're good. <laughs> you always have such great ideas. We love to hear them. Thank you so much. Everybody give it up for Poppy and Branch. <laughs> up next, I need Jessica and Roger Rabbit. I've been told we're on a bit of a time crunch. So, well, we might change that. Okay. Jessica and Roger Rabbit, how did you guys construct your costume? Um, everything is basically hand sewn. Oh, well, most of mine's hand sewn. Um, some of it's machine sewn. Yeah, uh, mine is c uh, machine sewn and hand sewn. And it's made of bridal satin. And I patterned the dress myself. And uh, we also patterned her dress. Uh, they're all original patterns. And it took us, sorry, between the two uh, dresses, it took us about a month to make both dresses. Um, and yeah, it, this has um, a flossed silk. I mean, sorry, flossed, uh, what is the word? Embroidery. Embroidery, yeah, on top of it. And I have a little button for the train because it is too long for the con floor. People would step on it <laughs> last con, so I had to add this. <laughs> Oh, and uh, bought the shoes and dyed them myself. So, fantastic designs. Jessica and Roger Robert, everybody, give it up. <laughs> Marissa and Giselle from Enchanted. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Those are grumpy walks. Marissa and Giselle. Queen Narissa. Queen Narissa. I apologize, Your Majesty. Explain to me how you uh, designed your costumes. Well, if you're going to do something right, you have to do it yourself. Meaning that I entirely made both of these costumes, including patterning this entire dress. Um, this skirt is layers of fun foam with fabric over it. Uh, yeah, this is, I think, five layers, right? Five, six layers <laughs> um, of tulle. Um, and then 
uh, turn around to the, the hair piece. All of that. <laughs> uh, it took um, a couple months to make entirely, but I did finish it mostly in the last couple weeks. The great designs. Thank you for blessing us with your designs, Queen Nerissa. Make sure you go up and show the, the judges further. Give it up, everybody. <laughs> Helsing Ultimate. Did you guys get tickets to the gun show? <laughs> Come on over here. Explain to me how you constructed your costumes. All right. Well, well, mine was just Amazon, honestly. Completely Amazon right here. Um, but the guns are actually from Anime Mundo, if anybody's ever been to that. One of the best conventions ever I've ever been to. Yeah, I see you. It was a great convention, and I'm very glad I got to get these guns. I'm going to pass it off to my homegirl, Annie. So one his cosplays didn't fit him, so he gave them to me, and so I had to fix it up. And I actually got my own pants from like Goodwill because the pants also didn't fit me. Um, the vest didn't fit me, so I had to sew it real quick because he literally gave it to me today. <laughs> so, this or this morning, yeah. So I had to sew the back of the vest, and then I had to find some pants, and then uh, my shoes were ripped, but I had to fix them. And then uh, we have uh, Sir Anderson or Father Anderson. Um, I made his, uh, his, it's actually a tracer gun, but I built it, it's a, from a nerf gun, so it actually shoots bullets, just because we like nerf battles. Um, I bought the glasses, and he made the cigarette out of a, like a glue stick and orange tape and paper. <laughs> yeah, it's much safer than actual cigarettes. Yeah. Give it up for hand-me-downs and cosplay. <laughs> you guys look great, thank you so much. Make sure you show the judges. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You guys look real paranoid. You okay? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is a safe space. I promise. So who's the designer? Come talk to me. Oh, okay. Well. Um, mine, uh, we got the top um, from a thrift store. And the jeans are also from a thrift store. And my scars are from Amazon. Mm -hmm. And um, this is from Home Depot. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> and yeah. What is the purpose? Um, it's actually an escape use in the video game, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Valve Exit. Yeah. What about this one over here? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Johnny Slaughter from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. So um, what we did is we went to uh, Ace to buy my gloves. Um, we caked them in blood like two days ago. Um, my knife, I used it from a, a Halloween costume I did of Tiffany Valentine last year. Um, my shoes already had them. My jeans, we went to several other stores to buy them. The blood, we caked them like two days ago as well. The shirt, we bought it like a couple days ago. So mine was pretty simple, but pretty hard at the same time. What's good, what about this one? So I'm uh, Black Nancy, and the reason we picked this is because they're like, expert level, I don't know what, at TCM, they spend hours playing and... So your kids inspired you <laughs> to cosplay. Yeah. Give it up for parents in cosplay. <laughs> so we dress little brother here as uh, the hitchhiker. So he's wearing, you know, he's put a little bit of blood on his arms and luckily he didn't freak out. And what about you, Leatherface? Um, this is pretty much just kind of, we, when we decided to do it, I was going to be cook. Uh, but kind of last minute we threw this together. We found everything like that good way. I'm glad you picked Leatherface. Yeah. Looks good. Thank you guys so much. Give it up for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I'm cosplaying Julie Crawford <laughs> from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah. Got character names. Give it up one more time. Well, up next, Asmodeus and Fizzaroli from Hell of a Boss. I'm going to end your life. 
please. Oh. Oh, spreading the love. Losing the hat. <laughs> Come over here, guys. So tell me how you constructed your costumes. They look great. Thank you. Well, I'm Osmodius, King of Lust from Hellboss. It's a pretty good show on YouTube for free. Um, this is my little fizzy. We cosplay these characters because we could relate so much to them because she's always say, oh, you have a big heart. You always hide on top. And I'm, I'm so broken. I want to be just like you. And I'm like, I'll help you out, you know. And so I accepted her because she was like, she had a hard life. She was broken. And little by little, I started to build up. And <laughs> we have a, a rough start. So it'll be a long story. But so tell me about the construction of your costumes. Uh, so basically for mine, <coughs> I just used the, uh, for example, the mask, it was just fabric the, from Hobby Lobby, the tool for like tutus for the eyes uh, to make that little fluffy. I like the effect the tutus give. Right? <laughs> so it's really hard to see through this. So. Um, for the feathers back here, which everyone loves and goes crazy for them when I do this. So <laughs> it's wild. That's the devil's booty right there. That's not America's booty. You can't see that anywhere else, just here. So, yeah. And for her, we usually order it from AliExpress. And usually when you order online, sometimes you receive it in a good condition. Sometimes you're in a bad condition. So we have to alternate everything. And for her little tail as well, which is also booty tail. My booty tail, by the way. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it was um, Epiphone, PVC pipe, everything. So <laughs> yeah, uh, it was handmade. It took us like two days. So everyone who does Kung Crunchy, yeah, yeah so you guys know the struggle. Thanks for showing it off to us. Make sure you show the judges. Everybody give it up for Asmodeus and F F Fizzeroli. <laughs> Task Force 141, fall in. Let's go. Give me somebody to talk to. Captain Price. Captain Price, step on up. Oh, step over there. Here, we'll step into the middle. So, so why would you guys, great group. How did we construct the costumes? Uh, we just built this all over time, sir. So the, the embroidery, what, what was the work you guys actually did? So this is all military gear we acquired throughout uh, the years. And... Some of this is actually also done by us as well. Like we have our, him right here, our Logan. He does. He did his mask. So it is all handmade. Uh, actually, uh, one of our buddy uh, Ham over there, he actually 3D printed a mask for me. Shout out to you, Ham. Ham, Ham. And uh, so after creating the mask, I sewed it onto a uh, black balaclava, painted the stripes here. And then just slowly over time, just collecting the pieces, uh, I super glued the, the headpiece to the actual, the fast helmet, so it keeps falling off. And just, just little details over time. Uh, for the sling of my weapon, I actually uh, did like a 550 cord braid. I don't know if you kind of see it. I kind of wrapped it around because it keeps falling everywhere. And uh, just little things, like obviously the first strike bar, it's a little military touch I like to add. And uh, yeah, that's mostly everything else is just over time collecting pieces. You guys look great. Make sure the judges see your costumes. Everybody give it up for Call of Duty guys. Task Force 141. <laughs> we're going we're to get our next contestants on their way up here. Arthur Morgan and Dutch Vanderland from Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, I thought during during call-in they weren't here, but the name is on here. 
So we're going to move on to the next one. I was really excited about that one. I was hoping they showed up. Manic Muff Mafia. They weren't here either, were they? Manic Muff Mafia, if you're here, raise your hands. No, they're not here. Double Black. Bungo Stray Dogs. You guys look great. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you construct your costumes? Uh, honestly, mostly just thrifted this. Thrifted basically all of this. A lot of it was mostly the paint that I worked the hardest on. Uh, the wig. I did style the wig uh, from an orange base. I don't know where I got it from. Also thrifted the wig, actually. So, yeah. Didn't know you can thrift those. Fun fact. <laughs> You can thrift anything if you go to a big city. Yeah, um, that's kind of it. Looks great. Everybody give it up for Double Black. <laughs> up next, I'm going to need the Wastelanders from Fallout. Let's go. I like this. I like Fallout. Why don't y'all tell me how your how your costumes are constructed? Um. Okay. Sorry, I took a lot of breath. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, this. Well. Okay. Um. I'll start with my armor. It was uh all fiberglass and EVA foam. Um. Just the bendable areas are EVA foam. Um. Helmet was casted fiberglass. There's still fiberglass carrying a little bit in there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, everything was just, I get niches up here, <laughs> but, um, yeah, just painted, weathered, um, sealed with flex seal clear and clear coat and polyurethane wax and for hers, uh, oh, the, the prop gun. Okay. So this was like an old Nerf gun that I took apart and put more pieces together to it. That's a, uh, I just literally took stuff out of the trash. Um, <laughs> This <laughs> this was a sour punch <laughs> container. That's a spray paint top. I just kind of like riveted and E6000 everything together and uh, painted and actually dropped it in resin so the paint won't chip, but it's kind of chipping. <laughs> but, um, sorry. I want to know about the pit boy. Oh, the okay. So the pit boy, it was a uh, blue vault 76 one that I repainted and weathered. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just repainted and weathered. I refitted it and reseamed the stitching so it's tighter on her. And how is the screen lit? Uh, well, the screen, I think, so there's an LED inside, and that's just like a clear, transparent picture. And uh, yeah, it just once the light goes on. <laughs> it's a great effect. Everybody, give it up for the Wastelanders. <laughs> Let's get our next group on their way up here. Uh, where are we at? Ruri and Jade from Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Final Fantasy fans. So why would you choose characters from Final Fantasy XIV? We just really like these characters. They, As soon as we saw them, we were just like, that's us. Great. Explain to me the construction of your, your costumes. Can I see the, the hammer? Oh, yeah, of course. Here, I'll take that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Um, everything is handmade, like all of this. We made all of the patterns ourselves. The weapons are 3D printed. The knives are from Dangerous Ladies. Yeah. Um, the daggers, the files are originally from Dangerous Ladies. Um, I 3D printed them and assembled them. And the hammer is made by Illustrious Models. Um, this is all 3D printed. I had to slice it a bit to get it to fit. 
Um, and I, I wanted to make a small correction. Um, I'm Gaia from Final Fantasy XIV, and she is Reen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for showing off your costumes. Make sure you show the... Wait and show the... Okay, Deadpool and Wolverine. We got a new movie coming out. Who's excited? Yeah. I don't know how to respond. <laughs> I just yell. I've been here. I've been on stage for a while. Come over here, guys. Yeah, why don't you explain to me uh, a little bit about the construction of your costumes? eBay. eBay. These are great. Show them off. Spin around. Do some poses. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Deadpool and Wolverine, everybody. Lenore Amabelli. A Amabelli. Lenore Amabelli? Is it Lenore and Amabelli? Okay, ha ha ha. I figured it out. From Nevermore. I don't know what that is. Come tell me. Ooh, careful. Oh, is that supposed to be like a hole through your, your, your body in the shape of a heart? Cool. I like the effect. So explain to me the construction of your costumes. Okay, so we wanted to do these costumes because she has a hole in the middle, and we thought an infinity mirror will look really cool. I like the effect a lot. There's a dangling heart in there, if you guys can't see it. Yes, there's, there's a dangling heart. <laughs> what about the dress, the suit? How'd you make them? So I know you can't see it, but underneath I have a Victorian shirt. Um, it, it was from a pattern that I found in a book. It was actually kind of hard to figure it out how to sew it because there's not a lot of information. Was it your first uh, attempt at making a pattern? Mm, not really. A Victorian pattern, yes. Oh. And the I made a cravat, and I actually learned how to tie it this morning. Oh, awesome. <laughs> how'd you learn how to tie your cravat? Huh? I'm sorry? How'd you learn? Uh, through YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. That's how I learned how to tie a tie, too. Yeah. My dad wasn't around. YouTube taught me everything. Let's see. Uh, yeah, and so I made this uh, dress from scratch. It's kind of a mix in of a modern and uh, Victorian dress, wedding dress. And this bill has um, jewelry on it. It has tambour beading, and it's a mix of tambour beading and just gluing on rhinestones. Uh, yes, and also the curls are a, it's a rack curl. Yep. Uh, yeah, rack curls, <laughs> the Victorian method. Yep. And the petals are made out of chiffon. We bought a half a jar and she just burned it on the shape and just sewed them so they're dangling because of her powers. And there's also another heart on the back. It's actually made of acrylic, cut in the shape of the heart. And then we use some of that foil that you use on windows to make the reflection. And also some LED lights to Give it the glow. Great designs. Everybody give it up. <laughs> Make sure you guys knock over your tablets as well so you can do 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 Um what? Umbrella scorp what? Umbrella Scorpion? Aha! Umbrella Scorpion. There we go, from Resident Evil. Oh no. I'm being raided again. Do you have a warrant, sir? <laughs> so tell me about the construction of your costumes, guys. So this took about... Damn, you are loud. What is that coming from? I have a speaker right here, here from everything else. And honestly, it tries to minimize my own voice. <laughs> so how, how long... I can't hear myself now. <laughs> God? Is that you? Hello? How did you, how did you put the costumes together? So this was a 11 to 10 year project that I had to create over and over again, just taking pieces, putting them back, taking pieces, putting them back. 
I'm a huge fan of Resident Evil. This looks great. Thank you guys so much for showing it off to us. Make sure the judges see it better. Give it up for Umbrella Scorpion. <laughs> princesses from Mario. The Mario Princesses. <laughs> Excellent. Tell me about the construction of your costumes, guys. So the costume that I made here was just from the orange to the lace, and the lace on the gloves, the bows. The yellow dress part is just like a base like from an original uh, daisy dress. And then my crown was lovely made by the lovely angel right over there. Love him so much. Thank you. Hi, angel. <laughs> Thank you. And then she's heard this separate. Okay, so this is my first time actually sewing a project. So it was a brand new experience. So my grandma lended me her sewing, her vintage sewing machine, probably older, it's like 50 years old. So this was my first time ever sewing a project. So in the back, we have a corset with ribbons. And on my tail, we have ribbon with stars made out of satin and lace. And for the front, so we got, this is EVA foam, more stars. And back here, this is lace, and then this is tulle. All, this is also sort of my original design. I mean, like, I've never seen a Rosalina with, like, stars. But this was my first time sewing. And the wig is crimped. It was crimped three times just to make this part go a little curvy. And this is also hairsprayed with got to be glue. <laughs> Hairspray. I used to have like a two-foot mohawk that I kept up with got to be glued. That stuff does not move. It's like cement. You guys will have one more thing to say. So this is my Luma. His name is Clorox. And I made it myself. This is made out of blanket, like blanket belt. And the eyes are made of bridal fabric. And that's it. This is Clorox. Clorox. Sounds clean. Y'all give it up. Thank you so much for showing off your costumes. Make sure the judges get a better look. Up next, Kimball and Kent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kimball and Kent. Man, I was looking forward to this one. Oh, look, he's going. He did it. Hey, Kemp. Kemp, Bob. Good boy. Kemp? Kemp. Kent. Kent, how long have you been doing cosplay? How long is that in dog years? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys look great. So tell me, tell me how you put your costume together. Well, what's interesting? Yes. We want the live stream Hi, live stream. Well, I've had this since uh, 2012, 14, and 16. In 2019, he got assigned to me, and the, uh, that was in July. And in October, the unit I was with was doing a trunk or treat. Since his name was Kent, we originally got him a Superman costume, <laughs> but it didn't fit. So we took it back to PetSmart, and they're like, well, the next size up, you know, you can go look, but we don't have any more Superman ones. So we're looking, and it's all Wonder Woman, Princess, all these different things. He reaches in there, starts yanking on one of the costumes. And I pull it out, and I was like, no one's going to believe that you picked this out yourself. Because I was we were going to the trunk or treat. I'm dressed like this. He picked that out. He knew. He knew. And the thing is, when earlier today when we was trying it on again, my oldest son thought it was hilarious because he did not want to have it taken off him either. He likes it so much. Yeah. 
He looks so comfortable in that hood, guys. Like, if you get a chance, come say hi to Kent. Come on. Can you do one more trick? Hey, Kent. Hey. Oh! Oh, hey, Kent. oh he's so sweet. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Sit, shake. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I know. You don't like your mask. <laughs> Great job, guys. Thank you so much. Give it up for Kimball and Kent. So it's time to announce the official after party. Corvus United Records presents Cosmics, El Paso Comic Con's official after party. We got DJ Snack, Cult Life, iUniverse, High Drive. High Drive? High Drive? The Epcot official after party. Best, we got a best costume contest at the after party. Free entry with your Epcon bracelets. So $10 entry without your bracelets. 21 plus, doors open at 9, so the party's already going. Get over there when you get out of here. It's uh, four. It's 216 South Ochoa, El Paso, Texas. Make sure you check out the rave after the costume contest. Who's ready to rave? We got a few more costumes. The Straw Hats from One Piece. Come make it on up here. If you guys want more information about the rave, there are flyers on the tables on the way out. Feel free to grab a flyer and make it on out to... Oh, we got the whole crew. <laughs> Good stuff. Give me somebody to talk to. Luffy, come talk to me. <laughs> Luffy, how, how do we come up with these costumes? How do we construct these costumes? I'm going to be honest with you. I just found them today at the Comic-Con. <laughs> and I assembled my crew. <laughs> Yo, how lucky is that to find the whole crew? You show up as the captain. You find your whole crew at Comic-Con. Yeah, it was super cool. Uh, if, well, my costume was constructed by Walmart. <laughs> And uh, Shanks gave me this hat, Amazon, and then the pants. <laughs> and these uh, these sandals are from my late stepfather, and they look damn good on me. <laughs> you guys look great. Show off your costumes, do some poses. Make sure the judges get a closer look at your costumes on your way down. Zoro's facing the wrong way. He got lost. Zoro got lost. He's facing the wrong way. <laughs> uh, I did want to say some things. Um... So, uh, basically, my whole entire costume was thrifted and made by my beautiful wife right here, Robin. Give it up for wives in cosplay. Uh, she also made everything from the boots to her jacket. And then uh, I just had to stand there and look pretty. Uh, <laughs> You're doing great. And then the last thing is uh, I put myself on a one-month diet, and I... Basically, ate clean, uh, worked out, weight lift, and did cardio. And you heard it here, folks. In one month, you, this look could be yours. Yeah. <laughs> Just watch what you eat. But yeah, that's kind of our cosplay. We tried our best, and yeah, that's all. I you did it. I dig it. Everybody, give it up for One Piece. Tifa, Vincent, Zach, Final Fantasy VII. That's half as many as 14. There's a lot of Final Fantasies. We met already. <laughs> where's where's your partners? Uh, my teammates are the friends I made all along. Aww, you're all our teammates. So how'd you construct your costume? So I'll tell you. I got some Sheen, I got some Savers, and I got some Nikes, and that's that's pretty much it. Oh, and then I I thought I should make something, so I made these, but that's pretty much it. Looks great, man. Give it up, Final Fantasy Seven.
Stolas and Verasica from Hell of a Boss. Oh, it's Roller Derby. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Derby Girls. Tell me, tell me quickly about the construction of your guys' costumes, please. Um, so I, well, Verasica typically has a dress. Obviously, I made this roller derby version. She can't roller derby in a dress, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> so I actually designed the graphic design for the front to look like a roller derby jersey. And then number in the back for all of you that watch Helva. It sucks for life. <laughs> um, and then just my roller derby gear. Looks good. What about this one? Uh, so I made this mask out of a discarded Coke box and some paper. This part is... That's the best kind of cosplay, recycled cosplay. <laughs> yes. Um, the tail was also cardboard. The end, I bought the fur off of Amazon. <laughs> this cape, um, I tried making it myself, but my sister had to help me because I can't sew. <laughs> Give it up for sisters in cosplay. You guys look great. Thank you so much. Make sure you show off your costumes to the judges as you go down. Give it up one more time for Stolas and v Verasica from Hell of a Boss. We got to have a Demon Slayer group. Come on up here, guys. Show me your costumes. Oh, it's a baby. Look at the babies. I got him. You coming? No? I got him? Okay. Oh, my gosh. What's up, guys? How old are you? Seven. Nine. <laughs> Seven months. Seven months. Is this your guys' first time cosplaying? Yeah. yeah. Are you excited to cosplay together? Um, we, um, yes. Nervous. You're doing great. You're doing, you're killing it. <laughs> so what are your characters? Um, on Tanjiro, she's... Nezuko. And this is and Baby Nezuko. <laughs> our, our baby sister is Baby Nezuko. You guys look so great. Give it up for the Demon Slayer group. Okay. That is our last group. Everybody, take a deep breath. <gasps> oh, we are finished. Let's give a big round of applause for all of our cosplayers tonight. The groups, the adults, the children. You all did so good. Thank you so much for coming. We got just a little bit more time. The judges have to deliberate. And then we're going to come back with some winners as soon as we can. We're going to take another short intermission like we did before. If you need to use the restroom, grab a drink. Now is the time. Please come back in a timely fashion so we can get our winners up here for some more pictures. We'll be right back.
Yes, honorable. Mm -hmm. Drew? Honorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Groups, get ready. We're going to do the groups first. We have some honorable mentions. Nevermore, the Nevermore group. Come on up here. I want to show you guys off. You guys got an honorable mention. The Wastelanders get an honorable mention. Come on up here, let's take some pictures. <laughs> Big round of applause for your runners up, everybody. We had a lot of great costumes this year. It wasn't easy to judge. We got some great winners for you. Third place for the groups, Roger and Jessica Rabbit. Make your way up here. Absolutely came down to little details on every costume. Third place, $50. One more time, Jessica and Roger Rabbit. And in second place groups. Final Fantasy IV group. Come on up. 14. 14. Final Fantasy 14. Come on up. Second place gets $150 and a kick-ass trophy. Are you guys ready for your first place group? Let me get a drum roll. In first place, the group with the best costume is the Trolls. First place wins $400 and a kick-ass trophy. Congratulations, guys. Every time. Great. All right. Now we're going to move on to the adults. I got a couple, a couple honorable mentions. Guts. Come on up here. Chic. Chic. Come on up here. And Thunder Warrior. Yeah, stay here. We can take some pictures. These contests are always so great. You all do such a great job. Wish we could give you prizes to everybody, but we definitely want to mention these costumes. I do give hugs. If anybody wants a hug. Not right now. <laughs> Don't run up for hugs right now. No kisses. Unless it's candy kisses. 
Give it up for our runners up, guys. Great costumes. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you next year. Stop right here for the cameraman. And then, third place, uh, Batman. Ham, 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 ham. Fifty dollars and a kick-ass trophy for third place. Up next, I need Bonnie. Bonnie. Bonnie, come on up. You won the prize. Another FNAF costume. I love these ones. Your second place winner. $100 and a kick-ass trophy. First place in the adult section. Round of applause. I mean, drum roll. <laughs> Come on, I can't hear you. This is first place for the adults. Let's go. Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. All hand crocheted from head to ankle. The shoes aren't crocheted, I asked. Bloomers, the dress, the bag, the radio, the broom, the cat. Way to go. First place, everybody. Now, we have a best in show. An overall winner from all the groups. I need the loudest drum roll you can manage right now. Let's go. Your overall winner of the comic contest, it's Hiccup. Let's go. Your winner, everybody. One more time, big round of applause for all of our contestants. Thank you, everybody, for participating in the 2024 El Paso Comic Con Costume Contest. Can I get all my adult winners, all my groups winners, so we can get a group picture up here, get up on the stage for me if you're still here. Please come participate. We enjoy this part a lot. The show is officially over. Thank you, everybody, for coming. My name is Billy Kills. Thanks for having me.